Okay, so let me check. It's a bit high. Yeah, it's a bit high, isn't it? What does this look like? That's a bit better. That's better. Look at us with our logo top. Wee! Not sponsored. Anyway. Yeah, but Marvel or Coca Cola if you'd like to get in touch. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another Listen and Draw. So, if you're not familiar, Listen and Draw is where Jack and I sit down and answer some of your questions that you've asked over the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. So, normally I do studio vlogs each week, but to give myself a little bit of a break, we have a little bit of a chat basically so that's what we're gonna do now we've got very cozy because mm -hmm. jack and i went back to hampshire this weekend it's sunday today when we're filming this i actually just launched my shop congrats ah, literally like an hour ago so i've seen my phone like completely buzz up with um dms and messages so i need to go through that after this but i thought i'd just leave my phone for a moment and try and forget because it, oh it's quite scary isn't it yeah, but long time coming though. Long time coming. So yeah, we're gonna answer your questions. Um, and I'm currently in pajamas and wearing Jack's jumper. Yeah, very on brand though. Coca -Cola. Very on brand. <laughs> Even my trousers are Coca-Cola. Addicted. On, very on brand. Yeah. Right, you ready for the first question? I am. Question one. Yeah. Maybe. Is there any part of your artistic process that you are most proud of? Um, I really like that, I really like that I don't necessarily always know what I'm doing with colour. Mm. So a lot of people ask me how I put the colours together that I do. And I would love to say that there's like some formula that I follow or yeah, something, yeah. but there really isn't. It's more on like instinct and putting certain colours together and getting an emotional reaction to it. So normally I'll put we like an orange with a blue yeah, or something yeah. and be like, ooh, <laughs> like it's so nice. Whereas I think, um, I think it's become like a huge part of my process just to try out certain colours together mm. and then see like what fits the, the vibe of the image. Right. <laughs> I know that sounds like so wanky, but like the vine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you lay a lot of colour on, on top of each other. I do, yeah, a lot of texture and colour. So mm. I'd say like texture and colour are probably the two the most biggest, proud well not necessarily proud of, but like the biggest elements of my work. Yeah, yeah. What about, they play a big but part. Are there certain parts of it, um, we're getting serious, I'm going to roll up my sleeve. Um, are there certain parts of it where you go, oh, I really enjoy that or I'm really proud of that or is it like certain parts of it is it doing the line work is it doing the color work is it doing those um, last minute touches is it going from sketch to I actually really love having a blank page it's scary but I love having a blank page and then have it like transform into a character or a picture like that's such a satisfying mm. thing and I'm sure like if you're an artist and you're watching this I mean you may even be drawing while watching this that's kind of the point of these where you can just stick them on you don't necessarily have to look mm. you can like look up occasionally if you fancy it but otherwise you can just get on with whatever yeah, you're do your doing um, but it's so satisfying to start off with something or like nothing and then mm. see it transform in front of your eyes mm. and to be the person that's actually done that is really exciting yeah. and I think for me um not that I'm a character designer in any way but I certainly try and have a consistent style amongst whatever I do so whenever I draw something it kind of looks like it's come out of my world mm. if you know what I mean yeah, it's all consistent. um yeah or I try for it to be anyway so once I draw, like I'm looking at this cat on our cushion at the moment, yeah. um, and that cat doesn't look like a literal cat in any way. Yeah. It's it's translated into my style and simplistic shapes, and um, and I think that's something that I'm proud of, like being able to take what I'm seeing in real life and or in my head and translating Having it a into style. my style. Mm. That would be like the top. Thing that I'm proudest of with my process. That's cool. Yeah. How to share art if you don't have social media, since I'm not allowed to have one. Okay. 
Um, I feel like we've touched on that one before. We have touched on that one before, but I've got something else to add to it. So oh, okay. I think, um, I believe before we spoke about like going to um, art fairs and craft fairs and try and get out in like the local community. Mm. But something that I don't think we've touched on and also that's kind of based on you being old enough to do that. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if you're too young for social media or there are other things at play that mean you can't have a social media account, mm. take photos of what you've done anyway and make what you would make on social media, but just send it to family and friends as yeah, pictures. Or just keep it for yourself. Or just keep it for yourself. Because one thing that I really love to do is take pictures of like process work and then just send them to family or friends if they ask me what I'm doing. Mm. Um, and I love receiving the same thing from them. And that's not going on social media at all, but you're still sharing your work, your stuff, you're still developing. Mm. So like definitely make like a mini portfolio just for you. It can just be photos of what you're doing or keep a record of digital art well, isn't, that the, um, isn't that the point of a sketchbook anyway? Yeah, that is a point of a sketchbook, but even if you want to make something, like if you made something final, yeah. and then you don't have anywhere to put it, it may feel like, oh, I'd love to put this on Instagram because then I'll get gratification for it and maybe yeah, yeah, people yeah. will discover me, etc. But if you're practicing now and you're too young to have social media, imagine what you'll be like at my age. Like, I'm 27. God, I feel so old. Okay. I'm, 20, I'm getting on yeah, no. over the hill. Um, I'm 27 and thinking back to the stuff that I made when I was, what, like 16? It's pretty, yeah, very, pretty bad. Um, or not not bad, but in well, comparison you, to the, where I am the now. Stuff that I saw you doing when we first started dating. Yeah. Like, like, it is wildly different. Wildly different. And I used to think that it was way better than it actually was. But mm. looking back now, since I've improved, it's actually crazy to see how that, much That makes sense though, because you've, you've documented the process. Yeah. And you've been sharing your content with people as you go. Yeah. For like, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm working on. Yeah. Like, um, I love documenting process. Just documenting it, yeah. <laughs> like these studio part of vlogs. <laughs> yeah, that is studio vlogs. Um, but yeah, I would say, to add on to like what we've said previously to this question, definitely just document it for yourself, send it to your family, yeah, just share, it your friends, you care about. share it with people you care about. And also another thing that's great for sharing anything is getting critiques. Um, so if there's something you're not entirely sure about, like if you're wondering between two different layouts or two color schemes, just ask people, yeah. just send it to them and see what they say. Um, Cause they will give you an opinion. So. Yeah, and critique, critiques are hard anyway. Like, you used to get really harsh critiques at uni. Yeah. So it does take, <laughs> it does like take, I've got a really thick skin. It does from take that. some years yeah. and practice getting used to being critiqued, but it is really useful. Super Otherwise, useful. like, how, how do you learn if you don't make mistakes? Exactly. Um, or don't even know that you should be doing this instead of that. And you get an entirely different perspective. It so, may yeah. be something that you hadn't even thought about. So, yeah, that would be my advice. Yeah. Mm. How do you make your flat feel homey? Oh, um, well, I'll take I'll, I'll tell you when we moved in to the flat. The flat was unfurnished, yeah. so there was nothing in this flat, um, and we had a debate about what kind of furniture to put into uh, the flat. Yeah. We exactly wanted to get um, colourful furniture, like where that was decorated and, and heavily adorned. Um, and I said, no, no, we should get white furniture mm -hmm. because in the same way that when you have a painting. You also frame the painting. The frame isn't always uh, grandiose. So there's no point, because otherwise it, it kind of takes distraction away from the painting, right? Mm -hmm. So we put in um, lots of plain furniture and then filled it with stuff that we loved and cared about. Yeah. And I think um, that's how yeah. you start to make a place feel uh, homely, um, is to fill it with the things that bring you um, joy. joy. Uh, and satisfaction. And I think as well, like we have so many trinkets yeah. and like novelty items, like up there on top of the shelves, we've got Rhino bookends where we've got all of our PlayStation games mm. and like DVDs and stuff. Um, and I think it's little touches like that, like you said, stuff yeah. that does give you joy and things that you can look at and go, okay, I'm home. Whereas mm. for me, I feel 
very kind of almost on edge when I don't have my stuff out around you, yeah. and and I'm like living there mm. permanently um, so like when we move to the next place obviously we'll unpack the boxes and whatever but for me in order for me to feel comfortable I like to get all those trinkets out and start to put them around almost to like mark territory. Well that's, that's what um, we did when we first moved in. Yeah. It's rather than unpack and put away clothes or to put like a table up. Yeah. Um, you started putting away all the trinkets. <laughs> and it was like, well we have nowhere to put anything. Any of these like we don't have like there's, there's no point getting the candle holders out because yeah. there's nowhere to put. Yeah. So it's, it's small things like that. And I think that's it's those little touches and I think it takes a little bit of time to make a place homely. Ho homely. Cause also it's kind of one of those things where you can leave something aesthetically on the side, yeah. but does it really work there? Yeah. Um, does it really deserve to exist there? Because it kind of, it kind it, of eventually kind of go, mm, yeah, that doesn't really work there because I'm not using the space. Yeah. In the way that I would. I think as well, like we, so at the moment we're packing everything because we move in thirty days. So Twenty nine days. Twenty nine days. Anyway, so we are currently putting things in boxes and like at the moment, I mean, you can see part of that shelf. Yeah. It's a mishmash yeah, of stuff yeah. because it's stuff that we're putting into boxes and then being like, oh, that can't quite go in that box. Let's just put it on the shelf. But these shelves next to us completely bare, um, which feels quite strange mm. because we're so used to seeing our stuff out so at the moment it's just plain furniture with a few like odd mishmash Bits items and pieces, yeah, still so um in terms of making things homely though i think like there's so much that can be said for adding colorful cushions rugs um photos or prints like art prints mm. make a huge difference the one thing about this flat was that we couldn't put anything on the walls yeah, that was so really it's been so annoying not like having really white walls loads of wall space and not actually being able to put anything up there mm. so i think like if you can definitely get some nice art prints that make you feel happy mm. and at home um, we've got a bunch packed just, away yeah, ready just ready i'm like i've had them for a couple of years i'm just ready to put them on the wall yeah so well, i think it's also it's like it's something that you add to over time to make, yeah, it, no, to it make a space is. have a feeling yeah like and i think that's that's part of it like we know that we want to do different things with the bedroom and the new place yeah. that we've done here and part of that is because we haven't been able to put things up on walls or have the kind of stuff that we want because we can't mount things to the walls and we can't yeah. have certain things in certain places so i think it's about um playing around with that kind of idea like in the kind of what makes you feel the best like like you yeah in terms of a space like where can you because again i love the fact that the sofa overlooks like when you look out you can see a lovely view of London mm. and like we put the sofa here because we wanted that view and whenever we come into this flat that's what makes it feel like home mm. if you know what I mean like yeah. I kind of come in put stuff down sit on the sofa see the view and just go oh yeah <laughs> so yeah exactly and in the new place it'll be a completely different view and it won't be about the view it'll be about the things in the room but I think there will be something within the living room or bedroom or whatever that will make you go, oh, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, I can relax. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So yeah. Oh, it's cool. We have a lot of stuff, so that, I think that There's helps. So many not weird We're not minimalists. Things. No. Um, oh, although I saw um, a term, which I feel like really defines us, maximalism. Right. So it, it's instead it's of being a minimalist. Well, it defines you. Yeah, it defines me. But it's where you go like mad and instead of having like plain walls you have like pictures on every single part it's of like the house wall and castles yeah castles. and and i saw a few pictures um on twitter of like people defining what this was and there were like rugs all over the floor and cushions everywhere and trinkets and on the bookshelves and i was like that that is it mm. that is me that's my aesthetic so down little, to little the two little bit of me yeah. Yeah. Have you ever dealt with art burnout and how did you handle mm -hmm. it? 
Um, so I had a bit of a wobble earlier this week. I had like such, well, one, I had the shop to open, two, I had a studio vlog to do, <laughs> three, I had secret to- Secret project stuff. Secret project um, that's coming out next year, but we've got like deadlines within- October. October, <laughs> yeah. I need to hit. And on top of that, work. And work at the moment is insane. Within publishing, usually, autumn is like one of the busiest times mm. so like one day this week we had 60 books published mm. um just to give you an idea of how oh, busy yeah. it is so and that's just on one day so it's a pretty busy time anyway but i decided it would be a good idea to open a shop and um do all these other projects which had um i was fine for a while and then all of a sudden one day i had another bunch of briefs come in from work and i just had a bit of a cry mm. because i couldn't i couldn't do it in my head i couldn't see a way of getting out of it getting out of it and fixing this problem because i just didn't feel like i could so jack very lovingly came over sorted me out gave me a bowl of sweets calmed me down wrote everything out on post-its because I like to have really long lists and then I break those lists down into new lists and then I break those lists down into lists so I'm kind of left with like four different lists all of which are pretty you long have a couple at the moment. of pages of stuff yeah and so I think part of the problem is, is you can't I think part of the problem with burnout is that you just don't feel like you can ever finish whatever you're supposed to be finishing yeah. and you're just tired yeah um and you're like, I don't know if I can keep going. Yeah. So I think part of like not of getting around that is to just kind of go, what needs to be done? Mm -hmm. You have to take a step back, step away from the table, go, yeah. what needs to be done? Um, and then you can kind of break it down and go from there. Like, yeah. what's the biggest thing that's going to be the blocker first? Like, what's yeah. the biggest problem that you have to get over? Get over that one first. Well, we break then it once down. it's done, you're we, done. Yeah, we break the list down into post its and then just put them as individual post-its on the wall in order of priority yeah. that I needed to do for work. And then we had a separate list for stuff I needed to do for personal stuff, so mm. i.e. shop, um, this else. other project, everything else, um, and moving. <laughs> so there were like all these other things, but actually compartmentalizing and breaking those down really helped. But not in the minutia um, that, it, that you often do in your lists. I think, yeah. I think what you do is you kind of go, um, I need to design this, which means I need to have this, 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 and you've got six tasks within, within that task. one. And I think you know that. And yeah. I think it is no, that I you do quite know like striking them off. Yeah. But I think the problem with that is, is that, say you have 10 jobs to do, mm. and there's six different jobs within each one of those. It's like 60 tasks. Yeah. So then you have that was a whole like, page That's of why I broke down. Yeah. <laughs> So you don't, you don't ever see the end because no. you're like, I don't ever feel like I'm ever really getting through anything. No. So you've got to break it down. You've got to just really go, I need to focus on trying to figure out how to get out of the woods yeah. first. Yeah. And then you can kind of go from there. But, but I, I, think I think you we, I were think, so lost with it. Like yeah, it was, I think the difficulty as well, because with Art Block, it's slightly different because it's not that you've got loads of deadlines and you're stressed necessarily. It's more that you feel like you can't create. Mm. Whereas I had the opposite problem. I had too much to do and I wanted to make things, but I couldn't give any time to the stuff that I wanted to do because I had to finish certain things first. Yeah. So, um, but when it comes to art block and I feel not very inspired or well, creative. It's not art, it's burnout. Art burnout. Well, fine, art but burnout. But art burnout is the point at the end of that. Yeah, but when, when I feel burnout, I will then, like you said, step back from the table, like take a step back, yeah. do something entirely different. It will usually be something that isn't, it will still be creative, but it won't be the same kind of technique or, mm. or like process. So if I'm feeling burnt out from drawing, I will not draw for like a day or so. Yeah. And I'll make some pom-poms while watching Netflix yeah. or something like that. And that will help me almost recharge. Um, you have to have other, I think 
I think the, the interesting thing about the question is, is that I think you were going to have burnout. So I think that what you did stopped the burnout. Oh, you mean the other day? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think that stopped the, the burnout happening. Yeah. But I think that you just to kind of recover from burnout, you kind of almost need to have a ritual that you can do to put your back to where you need to be. Yeah. So I think it's like understanding that if you do have burnout, just accept that it's not a big deal that you have burnout, accept that burnout's okay. Yeah. Um, and that it happens to everybody. Yeah. And even if it's not our city, like burnout, people just get burnout. Yeah. Like it's just life. Yeah. Um, and life is difficult. And, and I think the more that you beat yourself up, the worse, the worse it gets. The worse it is, yeah. So like what we did was we said, okay, there's no other way of getting around this problem. We have to finish these briefs. So let's, you know, do as much as you can. Like Jack was like, I'll support you in terms of like making dinner and getting drinks and that yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Making sure and you making still sure move. that you do still like take a break, even if it's 10 minutes. Um, so I knew that I was supported in that way, but it did mean that I could still get through it. And I kind of, because we'd worked everything out, like you said, it kind of prevented me from having a bit of a breakdown. Because, well, I kind of had a mini breakdown, yeah, but like yeah. having more of a breakdown because I didn't beat myself up, apart from when I cried. Yeah. But after that, I didn't beat myself up anymore. I went, right, I can do this. I've worked out exactly what I need to do. I've timed it as well. Mm. So I know that I've got time to do this and fit it all within a day. Mm. If, you know, X, Y, Z goes south, then I can talk to my manager, I can do this. So like, obviously this is going into like very specific stuff, but I feel like if I hadn't have had that, then I would have been burnt out. And if you weren't there, I would have beaten myself up. I would have got into a real state, felt like I couldn't do anything, probably spent most of that time not doing anything, yeah, just yeah. beating myself up. And then I'd be in a worse position because I haven't finished the work that I needed to do. So then I've proved to myself that, oh, I am useless. I can't do this. Mm. This was too much because I have just sat there and contemplated whether I could do it or not for, you know, the last four yeah, hours. Yeah. But, I think, um, but I think that if you don't have someone there, you've got to be that voice. You totally do. And, yeah. I think that and you've I'm got really to lucky see... that I've got you. Well, I did take, to do but, that. but like I think it's I think it's like one of those things where if you do feel like you're getting to the point where it's like it's getting a little bit too much, yeah. you just got to give yourself five minutes yeah. to to have a cry or to step away mm -hmm. or do whatever and go right. This problem is not going away yeah. anytime soon. How do I get this problem off my plate? Write it out. Yeah. Figure out which is the biggest problem. Hit that one first, and then go from there. Because once you get over the biggest problem you've like in mentally you've kind of done all of the work because yeah. you've got over to the top of that hill and everything else is lesser than the biggest problem yeah um and so you don't have to worry so much but dealing with the burnout like when you have been burnt you need to put time back into looking after yourself in terms of doing things that bring joy um, joy back to your life or just distraction yeah like i get a lot from from cooking or from like playing video games um or like painting so like you just have to find time to readdress the balance yeah definitely um i think with burnout yeah but i think burnout art, art burnout or not you just need to kind of work hit through it, it in see, a way yeah, yeah. like kind of eat that frog as yeah you say. Twain, like yeah. you've 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 kind of got to acknowledge it take a step back and then reapproach it feeling like more determined than you were before yeah because and you're, then if it doesn't really stopping happen, yourself exactly but and then, you, were, you were kind of you've tricked yourself into believing you're not going to get it done because yeah because you, yeah. you're so worried about not getting it done it's a mental thing it's yeah, not, you've blocked, you've, yeah you've blocked yourself by no fault with your own it's just it's just oh no just happen, like but. sometimes i'll be so amped to draw and then I'll sit down and I'll draw and I'll only do it for like 10 minutes but then I'll hate what I've done I'll be like oh that was a waste of time mm -hmm. I'm rubbish like I can't draw today which is so silly but then I'll what I'll do is I'll acknowledge that something is going wrong yeah. and think okay what could I do now like maybe I can just take a step back or draw a pattern do something that doesn't take as much like brain power and pressure 
So like you said, you've got to kind of take the pressure, hit off it right and on, come back at take it, yeah. a step back, and then come back fighting. Yeah, exactly. If each of you could pick one outfit to wear Ooh. forever, <laughs> what would it be? I've got so many good outfits. <laughs> yeah, I think it's harder for you than it is for me. Because I know I'd, I know I'd wear shoes wise, I'd wear boots. I love I love a boot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's an easy one. So therefore that means socks. The weirder the better. Um, I think jeans. Mm. Okay, nice. A good pair of jeans. Not chinos. Nah, I can't. I prefer jeans to chinos. It's I have fair. a lot of chinos, but yeah. I, I prefer jeans. I think. Fair. And then, like a nice t-shirt, or and then and then just like a jumper. I quite like a jumper. Autumn and winter are like favourite time of the year. Yeah, I love autumn. I love layering up. Yeah, yeah. But a nice, a nice um, big old jumper. That would do me. I think. I'm trying to think what I. Or in the summer, I'm wearing a shirt instead, like a colourful shirt. But like, yeah. a, I don't know, it's, it's good to think. It's like, um, I started rewatching Doctor Who because why not? Um, mm. well, nothing else to do during lockdown. And it was interesting watching David Tennant pick out his outfit for his character because it's like, I, you forget that he's wearing the exact same outfit pretty much every episode. Yeah. Right. And it's like, it's like oh my God, when does he find time to wash it? But also, like, um, what does he do on washing <laughs> Sorry, day? Thank you, yeah, I was thinking like, what does he do? Like, he must wash his clothes at some point because he lives in one outfit. Well, unless it's just like Marge Simpson, where they have like the no, same. No, he has he has a whole like collection of like loads of different clothes. So he must at some point have nabbed some other stuff. Right. But like, either that or it's sci-fi magic where his clothes are just always clean. Yeah, maybe. But like. It, I, he wears the exact same thing every He's in a time. lot of explosions as well. Like you'd think that there would be like a scuff yeah, in burns, the elbow or ash. something. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, loads of stuff. But like to, pin, point. to pinpoint it down to one item of clothing, oh, I quite like my teal jumper. I really like uh, that. Yeah, I like your teal jumper. So then you that. But um, yeah, I don't know. Like, but also like there is no point wearing a jumper in the middle of like July. No. Um, you know, and like like a doctor, he's wearing. He's wearing a shirt, mm -hmm. he's wearing a suit, yeah. he's wearing his coat. That's a lot of layers. Yeah, it is. You know? So, like, yeah, I think that would be... I'd go for that, because then I can I can kind of take off the jumper if I want to, mm. you know? I don't have to worry too much. So that, that would be mine, I think. Nice. I really love my colourful play suit which, from Monkey. Which, which one? It's got, like, it's pink. And it's got like lots of splodges. Oh yeah, yeah. I wear it all the time in studio vlogs. Yeah, you do. I do love that, mm -hmm. and it's so comfy. That's a good one. Um, you th I think the thing is, is you have lots of uh, good outfits. So it's not like, and, and, and also, <laughs> but also you don't wear um, like the same combination all the time. No. So you're like mis mismatch different outfits yeah, yeah. within the outfit anyway yeah so you you cycle through all these different things in different ways so i think it's harder for you to pinpoint it yeah because i've got so i have so many different combinations i don't know i, but I, but I, but I love it, would, it, would it be a place would it be a place suit? no i think it would be a dress because yeah. i love dress i so if because you, you rarely see my legs <laughs> Um, I usually wear skirts or dresses. It's quite rare for me to be wearing trousers. Well, you own one pair of jeans, but I've only ever seen you wear them twice. Yeah. Uh, in eight years. <laughs> and then even then you bought those jeans, what, two years ago, three years ago? Oh no, longer than that, because we were living in... Um... Uh, back in Hampshire yeah. before that. So what was that, four years ago? Mm -hmm. and I've seen you wear them twice in four years. So jeans is like a no for you. No. But like... I just feel too normal in jeans. Yeah. Does it, it doesn't quite feel right. Doesn't, doesn't do it for you. No. But like... Whereas all things when I'm silly. wearing a skirt or a dress, I love walking along, it flowing in the wind. Yeah. I, do, I, just, I just enjoy wearing dresses. I feel very me in a dress. Yeah. Um, and because I'm quite buxom, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I've got like a fairly small waist and quite big bottom. Yeah, your hourglass. Shape. I'm an hourglass shape. Um, I just feel like dresses suit me, and they suit my shape. And I always wear belts. 
with pretty much everything. So that cinches me in. Yeah. It gives me a bit more shape. Because normally I'll like buy a dress that's a bit like a tent. And then I'll put well, it's like we went to, a, went to a belt River, around it. We went to River Island and we had the, there was a sale on and we ended up buying that dress that was like a size... 22! 22. 22 and you were like, that'll be alright, we'll cinch it in with a belt. Done! And it was like, okay, Absolutely fine. fair enough. And I wear that all the time. Yeah, you do wear that quite often. But um, yeah, I think you'd wear something like that. I think for you it's about whatever outfit it would be. Yeah. It would be about... Um, It'd be about te it'd be a texture thing. Yeah. So the two textures would be different. Yeah, I like. Anyway. I quite like velvet. So I quite like. I've got a velvet cape. The blue one. Yeah. Yeah. So I quite like wearing a dress. But that's got two and different textures the on it. And then having the velvet and then cinching that. The hem in. of that has got a different texture too. It does. The velvet itself. So I think you play around with texture, and I yeah. think you play around with color. Yeah. Versus pattern. So often, more often than not, you'll wear one as a main and one as a as a secondary so you'll have color. starter main course you'll never like a... your dress will be patterned yeah and if your dress is patterned yeah you're more likely to wear um like your um i don't know what the word would be shawl cloak blazer thing jacket blazer. do you know what i mean like a um you know like a cardigan you're wearing Today, the cardigan. green one. That's a cardigan. Yeah, but the green, that is a cardigan. But I mean, like your blue thing isn't a cardigan. Oh, that that I call that a cloak. Yeah, right. So you would yeah. wear with that. You would wear a patterned dress with the blue cloak. Yeah. Because it's a contradiction of I've yeah. got a pattern. I need to have a color. Yeah. Or I've got a texture. I need to have a smooth. Yeah. So I think you interplay with those. Yeah, I do. Those Although items. I do quite like and sometimes different you're, patterns. Sometimes you're like it. double up. Yeah. Um, but Actually, one rare. one dress I really like is so it's got really funky sleeves. It's like a zebra print dress, and I think it fits me really nicely. Mm. And then I like pairing that with like with a velvet else. pattern or whatever. Well, when we move to the new place, um, you should you should do like a little like a couple of try on stuff. Yeah, I might do some bits in the garden. Oh, in the garden. In the garden. Ooh la la, the jardin, no? Um. Ready for the next question? Yeah. Uh, what do you and Jack like to do for fun? <laughs> um, we don't have much fun, do we, Dan? No, we have no fun. <laughs> um, what do we do for fun? I think Is it's, it's, bad that we can't think? I no, no, because I think I think we enjoy each other's company, so I yeah, think that's slightly different. But I think it's. Um, and also, we're in the middle of like lockdown, so you wouldn't go out. So like, we used to go out to galleries, museums, and the cinema. Yeah. Those would be things that we often do. Like we'll go out dates. to like a pub or a cafe. Yeah. So obviously, we can't do that. Uh, so we're kind of locked inside. Yeah. Um, we love making costumes for parties, but obviously, you can't do that. Yeah, we do. Yeah, that that used to be quite a big source of our fun yeah didn't yeah because yeah. you'd, you'd like build a couple up of days. you'd build up to it yeah so i guess that that was something uh like sit down and watch, watch we a sit, film we cuddle up and watch a movie or a tv show and then usually if it's tv it's um, some kind of trash uh tv yeah um, documentaries quite like oh we have a lot of documentary do we <laughs> save it from the trash tv <laughs> back up to the Oh, it's mostly me with the trash TV. Yeah, yeah. You and I on Sex and the City. Yeah, rewatching watching Sex and the City because I've never seen it. That's an interesting trip. But um, yeah, like I think there's there's bits and pieces we do, but I don't think there's like one thing that we do. No. We're quite. Uh, I mean, you you're constantly drawing and, and creating mm -hmm. stuff. Um, yeah. And I, really I think I think you're quite you're like... quite into there about sketching and stuff. We don't sit down and we draw together. I don't think we do occasionally. Occasion, well, um, we'll usually be doing separate things, but together. But we don't play like, I, re I refuse to play Scrabble, I hate playing Scrabble. Yeah, Jack so, gets really upset, and you refuse, but I really you, like Scrabble. And you refuse to play chess. Yeah. So there's, we wouldn't play a board game. No. Well, we play Uno sometimes. Yeah, we do play Uno, and I beat you in Uno. That's right, I'm just one of the Not all, to get on film. Not all the time. No, every time, every time no, I beat you. No, I beat you so many times. No, 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 I don't remember. Um, I, no, I think we just. Um, I mean, this is, this is just, quite fun. We just exist. Oh yeah, I quite like doing the Q and A's. 
I think what it is is that I just enjoy spending time with you regardless of what it is. Like even on the train today, as, have a little bored, as bored as I was on the train, mm -hmm. I hate sitting with nothing to do. Yeah. Um, just had to, have, to which, chat which have a nice to each other. Mm. I just like spending the time in your company. Yeah, same. Um, and more often than not, it's actually to do something really bizarre. Oh, like this. Um, Hang on. And I'm just like, what possessed you to do that? One second. One second. Yeah. So here's an example. We went out the other day uh, to buy bread, as you do when you run out of bread. Uh, I come back to the trolley and Xanthi has bought uh, <laughs> a life-sized Jack Skellington. I love him. He's six foot five. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> so little things like that. I enjoy doing it with you. Yeah, I. It, there's never a dull moment in yeah, our flat. True. I think that's the difference, isn't it? We don't have to find something fun to do because we're always doing something stupid. I think yeah, that is kind of it, to be honest. Um, and so that's quite. Can you can you reach? Yeah. That doesn't. Look, oh God, hip up me. That's what you get for buying life size, life, life sized, life sized. He's so great. Though. Spooky things. I'm gonna have him. For oh, years. I thought is that um. Other spooky thing, didn't I? The, oh, the Disney yeah. store and the cup. Um, but yeah, no, you. you um, I think it's just spending time in company because you do weird shit all the time, uh, and it's just quite funny to kind of go, "What on earth made you do that?" Well, so do you, to be fair. Yeah, no, I know I do weird. We're, shit both, we're both weird. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just spending time with you. Yeah, just, like, that's my favorite. Jack and I just enjoy like hanging out. <laughs> Yeah? Is that, like, that is our fun, really? Pissing about. Which is quite sad, yeah. yeah. Which We're is why, never... like, going to the museums and, and kind of galleries and stuff were nice, because you could kind of do that at a location. I that, yeah, that's true. I suppose, actually, one thing that we used to really like is going and looking at home scents. Oh, yeah. I'm and, sure. like, just looking at all the weird trinkets. Yeah, and, we, like, and... we like looking for weird things to add to the flat. Yeah. Um, well, I, don't, I don't think there's like an activity that unifies us as a couple other than no. we like creating stuff when we have the chance Making to create, stuff. create things. Yeah, yeah, we both like an arty day. Yeah. Arty day. yeah. You, you definitely, yeah. I do like a creative day though. Yeah, you do. You're quite creative. Yeah, I think so. No, you are. But you do, it's just your job. What, your job now is a bit more a bit creative. More creative yeah. But I think it's, um, yeah, I think it's just, we just like, I just like spending time with yeah. Oh, thanks. I don't think it needs to be anything specific. No. Um, but yeah, anything we do, I think I just because I think you you gotta find you can find fun in anything. Yeah. Like watching Xanthi try to cook is often quite fun for me. Not so much for you. <laughs> Send it. But that's what I mean. Like if you wanna, if you're trying to find something to do for fun. Yeah. Um, there's fun in everything. And there's also annoyance and everything, but as long as you kind of keep focused Jack on... Jack and I don't take much that seriously either. No, well, no, no. we do when we have to, but... Life's too short. We're like not really with each other. Constantly taking the mean? piss out of oh, each right, other. Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's never well, like... constantly winding you up. Yeah, and vice versa, to be honest. Mm. But also, actually, one thing that is quite fun at the moment that we're doing, not as regularly because we're moving, but when we move back, I'm going to be like on it. Um, wedding. Oh, right, yeah, wedding. Planning party. for like, wedding. Where on earth are you going? <laughs> What's she going to get me to do oh, now? Jesus, what is it? What else there could there be? Yeah, no wedding. Wedding planning. Yeah, wedding planning is pretty fun. Um, um, and deciding. That's also what? like, it's, that's also ties into like the whole, like, what are we going to do with the space kind of bullshit? Yeah, creative kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, coming up with creative solutions to weird things. Yeah. And um, theoretical situations that would never actually happen and talking about them. Yeah, constantly, yeah. That's most of our conversation. <laughs> we just chat. I think that's what we yeah. do a lot of. I mean, you can tell. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> do we do this once a month? It's yeah. a bit of a release. Uh, Let's go off on a tangent. Are you ready for the last question? Sure. Um, which is kind of one long question, but it's a question. Okay. Uh, how are you so natural talking to the camera? I just clam up and feel stupid when I do it, but you always seem so happy and down to earth. Teach me your ways. <laughs> uh, Amazing. Um, oh wow, the lighting is good, isn't yeah, it? Look at that. Superb, you can oh. fix this in post. I don't think I will. <laughs> but, um, um, how... How do you stay so natural behind the camera? Uh, well, it's easier because there's, there's two of us. So you can bounce no, off I each used other. To, I used to talk, well no, but studio vlogs, not so much. 
Okay, well, in this instance, oh, fine. it's easier because there's two of us. Yeah. So I'm bouncing. Just like we're I'm having a chat you, and you're there. And this is there. Yeah. Um, I think not taking yourself so seriously. Oh, totally. Is that, is one. A, that is a huge one. The sooner you learn not to give a shit, I can't swear. The sooner You've you learn. You've been swearing the whole way through anyway. You may as well I'll just enjoy keep. editing that. Uh, the sooner you learn not to give a damn about how people think and feel about you, the better off you'll be as a human being. Yeah, it's so true. Um, because everybody makes mistakes, uh, everybody poops, so get, on, get on with your life, yeah, have a nice time. I kind of feel as well, because um, I've been doing this for so long, like so long, I used to make videos as a teenager and make like weird comedy sketches. Mm. I mean, they were pretty questionable, but yeah, comedy sketches, and I've always like, I used to do a lot of acting yeah, as yeah. a kid. So I think that kind of helps because I've always been quite theatrical. Mm. I've always been very expressive. I always talk with my hands. I love chatting. Don't chat. <laughs> I don't really shut up. So, well, I do sometimes, but I normally when I'm with someone else, it's like, yeah. go, 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 go. So, too much, darling, too much. So, I, when I turn the camera, it is sort of like talking to a friend. And I know that sounds like so cheesy and probably really cliche, but genuinely, when I turn on the camera, because I know that it's not just a camera, yeah. you are watching this. So I know that when I'm filming this, right now it's chatting to a camera, but I know that there is a person at some point, at some gonna point who's gonna be watching it. Like you are right now. So that for me helps me talk naturally because mm. it is like chatting to a friend like if you know if you were a mate i would be chatting just like this yeah to be honest so i think that's yeah, so, um but how do you get i don't know it's and not like, not to be like you said not to be too precious about, about it. it and serious about it there are so many things that you could think about i.e what you look like um uh, you know not being attractive enough or not, not, being funny enough. not being funny enough doesn't matter like just be yourself for me i like after doing the first couple studio vlogs i really didn't care <laughs> how i looked really like obviously you do to a degree but i was like oh the amount of times there have been well, a mean, double you're, chin you're in wearing, shot and i'm like pajamas oh right god now, so. like oh no but i i don't care to be honest like that doesn't really affect anyone. It doesn't affect the illustration or the process or the the quality of the video. Yeah. It just affects me a little bit. So well, I think, I, I think what's know, nice about um, the studio vlogs is there's a level of realism to it, and it's not curated. Like when you watch like reality TV stuff, yeah. Like my God, is it cur like really heavily curated? Yeah. So I think what's nice about doing studio vlogs and YouTube in general it's not as curated like obviously no. it's edited and what we put out is a version of what we're happy with yeah but of like course, to a degree but I, yeah. think, I think part of that comes down to the mindset of well i just need to put a video out uh i film this here you go but also I'm happy, like i'm happy even, with that oh and my think, god i'm being blinded you are yeah oh um i'll sit here so even with like the backdrop here like we've got i've got random post-its there's wires everywhere there's jack the skeleton sun in the coming window. in jack skeleton in the window um i'm halfway in darkness but i i could go out and get lights put them up will it really affect what we're talking about not really and i feel like talking to the camera as long as you are authentic and talking about something yeah. that you're interested in that will come across like i get really excited sharing the process behind yeah. illustrating and making stuff because that for me is my bliss that's my passion yeah, yeah. so sharing that with people is really really exciting so talking about it with you guys is is because i'm excited about it i've decided to talk about that stuff because i want to share it mm. so it wouldn't work if I was being quite like a shrinking violet talking about it because it wouldn't show that I'm enthusiastic about it and that you should listen to me. Yeah, but I think I think the reason why people get nervous and shy about it is because they are 
worried about how they're going to be perceived. Per perceived. Yeah, of course. Like, I think that's. But that, if, that but needs if, to come down to. But that's to... what I mean. If their nature is naturally a little bit shy, that's not a problem. But just be yourself. Like you can, if you want to yeah. amp it up a little bit, like turn it up by five, you know. But don't feel like you need to be a whole other person. Just being yourself is enough. Yeah. To be honest. Well, it's always enough. Exactly. And if people don't like you, then that's fine too. Yeah. And well, that's something that seven, comes with life. There's what, like, seven just, billion people on the planet? One person doesn't like you? Who does, cares? It doesn't who cares? matter. Yeah. There's always going to be someone out there who hates you, and there's always someone out there who's going to like you. Yeah. And, and there's probably more people out there who's going to like you. Exactly. Um, but so, no, I, th I, think, I think just being genuine, enjoy the things that bring you joy. Yeah. Share with people who also love those things. Yeah. You know. We're not that complicated a species. Like, just go on with it. Share things that you love. Do things that you love doing. And it will come across. And it comes across. So it yeah, comes across to, as real. talk about like if you want to talk about your favourite film or your favourite picture book or whatever, just talk about it on camera, and that will probably sure. come across and show, yeah, yeah. and that will make you feel more natural. Um, also, something I used to do before I did studio vlogs actually, and I used to film like different format videos. Um, I would chat random shit <laughs> for like two three minutes not about the video at all just chat yeah I and then yeah, that gets used to me this, yeah. into um kind of pushes me into a false sense of security in a way mm. and kind of lulls you into it and then you go into the video whereas if you turn on the camera and then you're feeling a bit like, oh, hello, everyone. You yeah, know? yeah, that can be a bit hard. So I would sometimes, to get myself used to it, would just talk like this, really, and just keep, you know, chatting and yeah, chat have... a bit about my day yeah. or whatever, and then be like, hello, how are you doing? You know, blah, blah, blah. yeah. I mean, I, I know I, I chat all the time. I talk to the, I talk to everything. You do actually, mostly actually. inanimate objects, um, mm. like the washing machine. Mm. Like the washing when the washing machine turns off, it makes a big old noise. Um, and I'll turn it off and I'll shout at it saying, you know, I'm coming to turn it off, don't worry about it. And then it'll beep again at me and I usually have a conversation. But we talk with stuff all the time, so yeah, I think that do. helps the practice of it. Because um, we're constantly talking. If also, if you aren't comfortable talking on camera, try talking to yourself in the mirror. I know that sounds really weird, but it can actually up your confidence a bit. So just like sit in front of the mirror. Mad, yeah, yeah does it, you know, everyone does it, it's fine. But just look in the mirror for, I don't know, five minutes and just chat as if you would on camera. Yeah. And then go and do that with the camera and see whether you feel comfortable. Yeah. Or like try it on your phone or something because some people prefer handhelds rather than DSLRs because that feels like a bit of pressure because it's a bigger camera. It's Whereas like, when it's yeah, with your yeah. phone, you're just like, hey guys, it's how are you casual. doing? You know? So, yeah. Mm. But I think it's just, yeah, just, just embrace it. Yeah. And be honest with yourself and how you what you think about stuff and what you love to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. Fish, bash, no more questions, Your Honour. No more questions. Well, there we go. There go. Um, I'm being blinded again. Apologies for the lighting. It's been. Um, it's fine for me. It's I mean, that's simple. what happens when you come back on a Sunday and afternoon the and then the you film in the middle of the day. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this listen and draw. A few of you have been sending me pictures of what you've made while listening to us, like, and drawing, so, which is really cool. Yeah. That's really cute. Yeah. So, and some people have been telling me what they've been up to. So if you would like to share what you've made or what you've done, what you're doing while watching this, then, then feel free mm. because you're more than welcome to. What's the, what's, we might do the next listen and draw by the time we're done with all this. We might be in the new place. Oh my god, is this is our last one here. It might Maybe, be. Maybe, yeah. Because it's we refilm it. Because we've got 29 days to go. But this might be. 21 seconds to go. <laughs> you've got 21 seconds to go. Um, yeah. I've got four minutes to say the world. Um, <laughs> we've got 29 days left here. So it might be that we film one more here, or the first one will be in the new house. house. Wow. How weird is that? That is pretty weird. Um, Anyway. But yeah, let us know what you are up to. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And have a lovely day. Bye. See you later. Bye. That was fun. <laughs>